So concentrate on the next one, which is now our SLD was finalized and all the equipments are placed. Now, to operate these equipments and to uh, for this entire substation, I require the illumination and some motors will be there for the firefighting, all these things. So a substation or any industry or any building, residential building, apartments, everything required some auxiliary supply. Auxiliary supply in the sense for an auxiliary purpose, like for the illumination, for the, the motors, and for the operation of the breakers, isolators, we require motors to root to, to uh, we have to give some supply to those motors. And for the in the transformers, we are having the fans, cooling fans, those require some illumination, and street lights we require illumination. Inside the conference halls in the substation, we require the illumination and the heaters will be there and the geysers, uh, sorry, uh, geysers will be there and uh, all the things. So what are the things uh, generally you are going to uh, have, impl you are going to uh, uh, implement in the substation for all these things, you require the illumination as well as other, all the other things. For the relay as we require, we have to give the supply. DC supply, so all these things, some AC, DC supply is required. So how we will get this AC supply and DC supply? So AC supply, generally in the substations, uh, we can get the AC supply directly from the grid, from the uh, nearby grid. Suppose this is my substation, which is a 33 bar 220 kV substation. This substation, I required a auxiliary supply of 33 kV, which I am taking from the nearby some 33 kV substation. Or else, you can use, you can, you can, you, you can place a auxiliary transformer, which is a 30, which is converting the 33 kV to 415 volts. And the same power you are generating, uh, you are suppose you are generating 100 megawatt to the substation. You can you can send 99.5 megawatt to the substation. 0.5 megawatt you can use for the auxiliary consumption. So it depends upon your type of your application. And uh, this is AC supply. So you require the DC supply also. DC supply is very very uh, essential and should be very very reliable supply because the DC supply is generally we are giving for all the relays which are very, very uh, essential, required for uh, mandatory equipments for uh, to uh, operate the protection efficiently. So here I am talking about AC supply, DC supply, and a one, word, one more word, which is a reliability. The AC supply and the DC supply should be there in every substation, every substation is having AC supply of 415 volts and the DC supply of 110 volts or 220 volts. It depends upon the project to two project, substation to substation. If it is a low substations, they are using 110 volts. If it is a big substation, so more than 220 kV, 220 kV substations, they are having 220 volts DC. So the 220 volts DC and 415 volt AC or will be there for every substation. But again, one more point is, how much reliable auxiliary supply you required for the substation? That is my next question. Reliable, what is the reliability? I am saying that if my 415 volts, if my transformer is failed, then I have to, uh, there should be one more transformer uh, to handle the entire load. Now, the question of reliability comes here. Suppose, this is my one transformer, which is, sent, which is uh, stepping down the 33 kV to 415 volts. This is the transformer one. And I'm having a one more transformer, which is stepping down the 
33 kV to 415 volts, which is transformer to, and these two are connecting to some equipments. So here the question is, if this transformer is active and this transformer is also active, if this transformer is failed due to some, say, some reason, this transformer has to feed the entire loads. And if this transformer is also failed, then what is the option? Then I want to place one more transformer. Then the question rises that if this also failed, then what is the case? I have to place one more transformer. So where you have to stop? How much, how, how we will stop this? This will, this can be stopped. Whether you know how much reliable supply is required for your substation. In some projects, you can handle, you can go ahead with only a single transformer. In some projects, you require two transformers. In some projects, three transformers might be the best solution. So who will tell this? How can we know this? Not only here, in the substation designing also, when I, I am talking this in the say this one same in our from the first sessions, reliability, reliability, how much reliability I required? One conductor or two conductors, one transformer or two transformers. Our project is 200 megawatt of substation. To for 200 megawatt of substation, I can place two into 100 MVA transformers. One said three into 100 MVA transformer. Other came, he said one into 200 MVA transformer. One more person came and he said four into 50 MVA transformer. All are right. But only one would be the best one for my project. All are right with respect to the theoretical, but in out of all the out of all the all. Only one person is the giving the right solution for this project. How is giving the right uh, uh, exact one? So he is doing the reliability analysis. He is doing the reliability analysis. Reliability analysis in the sense, I am I am checking what would be the chances of failure of this equipment. And if this equipment failed, what would be the loss of loss for me? And if this how my, in, in a, some period of time, how many times this equipment will fail? All these things uh, we will call as a, a reliability analysis. So the reliability analysis we are doing with respect to the standard of IEEE gold book. IEEE gold book and the standard is IEEE 493. IEEE 493. So IEEE 493 will tell us how, what, how, what is, how to uh, do this all the uh, calculations for the uh, reliability analysis. So let's share my screen to you and have the discussion on this reliability analysis. Please.